fucking do all these mind games and math problems yeah. and fucking figure all this shit out in order to just fix this problem that like nobody wants to admit is an actual problem. Yeah. yeah. Drugs are a problem, booze is a problem, fucking's a problem, but eating, that's your fault. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, it baffles me every time. Guess what, guys? We're not doctors. No, we are not. If you're going to be making any major medical decisions, please consult your doctor. That includes diets, exercise, medications, and surgery. We love you guys. And we want you to continue to be in our OSLP family forever. So be careful and, and consult, consult your, your doctors. doctors. We all need our vitamins after surgery, regardless of what you think. Yes. It's a must. Yes. So why not choose the easiest and the best tasting in the community? Seriously, it's pro care, guys. Pro care is so delicious. I use their chewable for over a year. That's yes, how I know. I, yes. And I love their capsules. Yes. Love them. They're yes. once a day. I take them at night. Easy peasy. And my labs are fantastic yeah our labs are great and i've actually switched to the capsules and i take those at night now so yes. if you guys need your iron they have them with iron and they have them iron free they even have calcium chews yes the calcium chews mm, perfect they have mocktail ones cal uh, chocolate they have also some caramel and a cinnamon roll. They're freaking delicious. So go over to ProCareNow.com and use our code OSLP to save some money. Prepping and measuring your food post-op is a beast all in itself. But Portion Perfection has actually made it super, super simple. They have bowls, plates, and even a lunch bag called the Kitten Carry where you can have all of the system ready to go. Yeah, we love carrying that thing around with mm -hmm. us. It's so much easier to pack your lunch, your snacks, especially when you're on a road trip. That mm -hmm. thing is a lifesaver. Yes. So if you want to get these things to help your journey, just go over to portionperfection.com and use our code 15 osl pod and again that's 15 osl pod and you can also go over to our amazon storefront to pick out any of those that you would like to use all know how difficult post-op life can be yeah it's pretty freaking hard guys yes and so a way to make it a little bit easier is by joining the tribe membership program it has been created by a registered dietitian she's actually the sleeve dietitian on instagram her name is jamie and she's created this whole membership program just to support us. Yeah, like we've won. We've had her on the podcast. We love her to freaking death. And then two, like she has full experts in their field that help you. And they've had bariatric surgery, almost every one of them. Yes. And the diet, the sleep dietitian is freaking smart because she has almost a support group every single day, guys. Yes. You're going to get an email. It's going to tell you which ones are for today. And you can just sign up and hang out with people that are just like you. Mm -hmm. And I've even used the journal prompts. I'm into journaling and that was way helpful to just go somewhere that can help you and just get your mind going. Yes. So if you need this kind of support, which a lot of us do, mm -hmm. go to her website and use our code OSLP at checkout to get your discount. Welcome back, OSLP family. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to our Sleeve Life podcast, and this is Kelly. This is Ma. That was very forceful, and I apologize for that. It sounded... I love how it was forceful. Yeah. Because you even were so forceful, I couldn't even do Ma <laughs> without the forceness. <laughs> and we're not even in Star Wars, so no force. The you're such an may idiot. the force be with you Kelly. i get what you're saying i don't do you i do not have do the you? energy for your shenanigans right it's now it's too late i already smoked stop you're gonna it. have to deal with it. stop it right now <laughs> um so we have an award show we do coming up second year running yes september 30th mm -hmm. of this year it is in washington dc fuck yeah I'm and stoked. it is at the howard theater and we have a whole weekend of festivities. Yeah, we do. Coming. What's cool, it starts off with something free. You get to hang out yeah. with us. Yep. Yeah. Thursday night is going to be a free live podcast for by yours truly. That's right. Us. At the and Eaton. then yes. And then uh the next night or the next day is gonna be some we can tell you this. It mm -hmm. is going to be a wellness morning. Yes. And we have certain things lined up. And once we have like 100% in order, we will tell you the rest of it. But it is going to be a wellness morning on Friday. What's funny is I will randomly tell 
the audience of what we're doing. Yes, she will. And sometimes I don't tell you. Yeah. Because I've yeah, been told actually we shouldn't because it's not been booked yet. So yeah, so that's I... that's my little input into <laughs> that. Please. Yeah. It's fine. Mel, you can't tell them all the things. Just know it's gonna be a great time. It's gonna be that's a great time. Ever. And then Saturday morning, we're gonna have more wellness morning mm-hmm. items. And then Saturday night is the show. I know. I'm so excited yes. because again. The Howard Theater is insanely beautiful, uh, beautiful. And it's like something that me and Kelly, when we walked in, we knew right away that this is ours. We're like, we have to do this. We must find the money for this video. Actually, we knew it from the moment we Sarah walked us through the digital. I know. Footprint. And then once you're inside, you're like, yeah, this is happening. We didn't want to book anything until it was like we saw it in person because, you know. Well, and know that like it's two stories. It is. There is a balcony area. And if you do the like bundling for your booth, you'll actually get a a server that comes to your. Some of them. The the balcony ones. Yeah. Yeah. The the premier seating is the balconies. Yeah. 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 So there's only certain tables upstairs that get the table service. Yeah. 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 It's a QR code. Anyways, <laughs> Kelly wanted to jump in there. No. Tell me I'm wrong. Anyways. Anyways. So if you get those booths, they are premier uh, booths and you get to have table service. So you don't have to get up and move around during the show. If you mm-hmm. have those, they will literally bring you your alcoholic or non-alcoholic drinks to your table. Yes. You just have to purchase those in sets of either four or six and they have to be purchased all in one. Yep. Yes. And it's going to be a great night because we have been getting messages for even people that are just out in the community of things that they want to do. And yeah, it's going to be fun things. so much fun. Yes. So we, have, fun. we just had a meeting yesterday, actually. about We that. did. So, so, yeah. So we do want to thank our top sponsor, mm-hmm. which is ProCare. You guys know how much we love ProCare Woo-hoo. and they love us just as much, I would hope, because they're this is the second year they're be our top sponsor. I know. And we have SABP. Yes. Love them. And we have the Sleeve Dietitian. And we have own bariatrics. So yes. all these are repeat sponsors because they believe in us. They believe in you. Because this the is literally a People's Choice Awards for the community. Yes. So you guys chose them. Nominations are over. I'm literally going through all the nominations this weekend. Mm-hmm. By the time this airs, you will know all the people that are being nominated. Yeah. And then you'll be getting ready for voting because voting starts August 1st. Did you forget for a second? No. Nope. Okay. No, no, you paused. I did. I looked at Neem. I looked at our guest that's about to be on, and uh, I and it stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I like it. I know. Um. So yeah, go over to jbyawards.com. Get your ticket. Make sure that you're checking back because things are changing and shifting, and we're that's right. getting more information out there every single day. So make sure that you um are watching jbyawards.com yeah. or our Instagram. So all of our social media platforms, because we actually have um, a whole support group just for you. Yes, we do. And they're called our patrons. And we actually call this support group the Benchies. Mm -hmm. The Benchies get a Brinchy brunch the day after the freaking show. They do. And And it's free. It's free. It's us giving back to them because Mm -hmm. they help us. They literally support us financially, emotionally, like physically. Like they literally make sure we're on track. We help them with their things. Um, And so if you want to be a part of that group, because they also get a discount to go to JBY. um, It is patreon.com forward slash OSLP. And you pick either $7 or higher and you can join that group. And we will hang out with you in our Facebook Messenger, not Messenger, Facebook hey, group. Yeah. 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 You, you, you okay? Are you? No. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing we want you to do is go to YouTube. It is mm-hmm. preloaded on your phone. We need to go you to go over there. Type in our Sleeve Life podcast. We are the only ones. That's right. And then you, it is the free way to support us by clicking subscribe and the little bell so you're notified when future videos like this drop. I know. And then you guys would know why I got distracted a little bit earlier. Yes. Because we do have a guest that's just been hanging out, chilling. Waiting for us And to he has a big old beard and he's playing with it. Yes. And I love it. Yes. So... <laughs> Welcome, Nima. He is on the My Gastric Sleeve podcast, and we are actually doing a crossover episode. That's right. So you get to hear all about our story on Nima's and now today. And now yeah. they're going to get to hear all about him. Yeah. So and Nima. it should be out right now. So welcome on, Nima. <laughs> Thank you very much. I 
have loved you too from afar. And now I get to be on your show and I'm so excited and I can't, can't wait to have you on my show. And this is going to be wonderful. And this is just amazing. It's just so much, so much fun and energy. And you two are just dynamic. (laughs) I love it. Thank you. We're just cracking you you. up over there. Yes. So can we start way, 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 way back Way back when your weight started to become an issue? Yeah. Yeah. When so did you know I, that it was an issue? Well, I didn't for oh. a while. Okay. Okay. How far? Uh, how long because ago? I this is very I'm I have very blessed with math in my life. Oh. <laughs> so I don't, I don't I was, think all of us would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 1980. Okay. So how, if you ever want to know my age, you add the first two digits of the year to the last two digits of the year. So Mm -hmm. if it's the year 2000, I'm 20. If it's 2001, it's 20 plus 01, it's 21. Yeah. Also, if you wanted (laughs) to know my weight for each of those years, you just add a zero to the end of my age. So at 18, I weighed 180 and I gained 10 pounds a year every year. No way. At 20, I was 200. At 30, I was 300. At 40, I was 400. Fuck. And- I have, I think it's undiagnosed. So I didn't, I, my Google, uh, medical license has expired, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) but I have what I think is, uh, reverse body dysmorphia. Okay. So I don't think I'm as fat as I am. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still a buck 80 in high school Mm. and it's weird that so many people bump into me and I have to sit so far away from the table. There's like a weird force field around me that I just don't comprehend okay. until I see a picture of myself. And mm. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is insane. Mm-hmm. So that kept me. And also like, I didn't have any health issues. I didn't have any problems until I did. And then it was this like water slide yeah. moment of just I know the term is watershed but it really felt more like a water slide <laughs> okay but it was just like non-stop twists and turns super fast like oh you have uh you're pre-diabetic and then like a month later you're diabetic you have sleep apnea you have lymphedema you uh your cholesterol is sneaking up your LDLs are high your HDLs are high your you have fatty liver disease you i mean ev- all the things yeah. all the things that are happening foot swelling uh back pain neck pain knee pain uh and and it's really started to affect me and it and and even then i kept finding these workarounds i kept mm-hmm. getting to uh this like you know, hitting rock bottom kind of moments Mm -hmm. and then finding the workaround for it and then going, oh, it's not that bad. And it took, this is the weirdest thing. And it's, it's always the most random shit that like sticks out to you. I was watching an episode of Hoarders. Okay. Good show. Obsessed. Can't get enough of it. It makes me want to clean my house. Oh my God. It makes me want to throw everything away yep. and just start over. Fuck it. If I, yep. if, if I need it, I'll get a new one. Yep. And I was watching this episode. The son walks in, sees his mom living in this like squalor. And he's like, how did this happen to you? And she goes, I've thought about it a lot. Huh. <laughs> but I, got, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to, right? Well, eventually. And she goes, it feels like you're on a ladder, a really tall ladder. And then you keep going down one rung at a time. Okay. And then you look around and your surroundings don't look that different. Mm. You know, 80 feet compared to 75 feet on a ladder is not that different. Mm-hmm. Two rungs down at 70 feet is not that different from two rungs up from 70 feet. Mm-hmm. And eventually your brain just goes, this is, this is my new normal. This mm-hmm. is my new normal. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of acquiesce to that mentality Mm-hmm. And you just find ways to pockets to manipulate what you need to manipulate. And it was between that episode, something that happened to me at college, because I, I finished college late in my 30s, because okay. good at math, but not great at other stuff. And <laughs> Hey, man, I graduated at 28. 
29, something like that. Yeah. I feel you. I get it. Ah. We go back, but at least we went back. Yes. That's so everyone right. listening, yeah. you can always go back. Yes. You do not have to do it just right after high school. Yeah. Yeah. There's and- a great David Spade uh, quote from Black Sheep when he's when he goes, lots of people go to college for 10 years. They're called doctors. <laughs> Yes. Like, right. Yeah, but so. we're not doctors. <laughs> I'm, we're doctor adjacent, damn it. Yeah, yeah, that's we, right. We talk to so many doctors. We are experts. <laughs> we, we are experts. We are we're... not doctors. We are <laughs> experts. True. We literally say it in the beginning of our that episode. We are best. not doctors. I know. The disclaimer does this. Not a doctor. We're not <laughs> a doctor. If, if this podcast thing doesn't work out for you, law is definitely in your future. I know. That was like the most like, but for the record... <laughs> Not a doc. Not a doc. For the record, okay. everybody, none of us are doctors, That's even true. if we went to school for 10 years. <laughs> yes, the time frame does not make you a doctor. Yeah, she's right. lawyer. There you right go. Here. Yep. <laughs> lawyer. Lawyer. I'm lawyer adjacent. There you go. <laughs> so oh, I was in, so I was in school and I was taking these classes at night and I couldn't fit in the chairs in the school. And I uh I, I must have been about 34, 35. So I was about 340, 350. Okay. And I, I couldn't get in there anymore. And I talked to the professor. And, and for the first couple of weeks, the professor had me come and sit up in front of the class at the desk so where he taught from. Like like what your nightmare is yeah. when yeah. you're young. Like, oh God, the, like, the only thing that was missing was I just wasn't naked. Yeah, but that's I was what just I was like, thinking. Like you weren't naked. So that's the only, <laughs> the only loss. <laughs> God, you're a real silver linings kind of gal, aren't you? <laughs> no, really, I'm She's not. not. At least you weren't naked. At least you weren't naked. <laughs> you weren't naked and you weren't like having to do a presentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah the that's only right. two things that's you got true. going for you. Yeah, well, yeah. When did you not fitting into those desks start? Was it just that year? Yeah. It was. Well, so okay. I, I went to three colleges. I went to Cal State Fullerton at first. Shout out to the Titans. And then I, I dropped out of that school because I, um, I wasn't going to school. So why? Fair. <laughs> why throw good money after bad? Yeah. So then I didn't go to school for a little while. Then I had to go to a junior college to boost my GPA back up. Yeah. And then that took a long time because I was also working at the same time. Yep. Then I finally got into Cal State Dominguez. Shout out to the Toros. Woo-hoo. And then I went to I went to that school and that took me like probably two and a half years to graduate. Okay. okay. So from about like 35 to 37 and a half was about that time okay. or 38. So then once I graduated from, so I, I did all that. I, I got the bigger desk and I, I fixed the problem. I didn't fix me. I just got a bigger desk and then I had to just be an asshole every time I'd go into class and someone would be like, Oh fuck a desk and a half. I'll just take this one. And I'll be like, mm. actually I'm ADA. So you have to let me sit. Like I'm so fat. I'm now disabled. So now I need to sit at this desk. Oh wow. And that okay. was like so embarrassing, but I yeah. still did it. Yeah graduated got my degree everything was fine and then i went to my doctor dr john gruen and i still need to reach out to him because it's been i think i had my surgery two years ago and i still haven't talked to him about it oh and he looked at me i was 38 years old at about 380 okay or maybe i was no i was 40 i was four i was 410 at the time i was ahead of schedule Okay. So I was 410 at 40. I was killing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. You're, yeah. You're just ahead of the curve. Okay. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, doctors have always been like, have you thought about gastric surgery? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? You should take our nutrition class. And I'm always like, look, man, I've taken every, what you name it, I've done it. Yeah. Right. If it's a diet plan, uh, deliver the food, Weight Watchers, group shit, fucking app stuff exercise calorie mm-hmm. deficient keto fucking protein <laughs> starving thirsty fucking whatever <laughs> you, you say it i've done it i feel like it's just short of drugs yeah, yeah. like i did ju- that too I- <laughs> oh, okay. there you go. yeah yeah so i tried we, it we all literally hit it all yep. we've hit yeah. it all the trifecta yeah. there so he was like listen man i'm not gonna tell you you're gonna walk out of my office and have a heart attack and die but what I am going to tell you is you're 40 and I don't think you're going to hit 60. Yeah. And I always to this day, but I admit it readily. I always wish that my first reaction would have been like, oh, I just met my wife, you know, 
Yeah. Um, now I'm only going to get 20 more years with her. Mm-hmm. That, in my defense, that was my second thought. My first thought was, I don't get to retire. Wow. <laughs> yep. That's true. You worked yeah. all your life. All that time. Yeah. yeah. To not retire. And it's a lot. I worked mm-hmm. longer than I've known my wife. So that that's kind of okay. And yeah. then and then I was like, oh, my wife and my family and my friends and blah, blah, blah. Everybody's sad. So then, <laughs> you sound it, like me. then even then it took me another like year to decide to do it and then start mm-hmm. taking the classes and the classes take a minute mm-hmm. to go through all the the psych courses and the the you know the emotional learning mm-hmm. and the the dietary learning the nutritional learning grapes over raisins you know mm-hmm. like we everyone remembers that <laughs> don't have dried fruit because it's all just sugar and yeah. it's like yep. okay <laughs> so <laughs> so then it was then i was like really into it and I, I really wanted to to do it i had a friend that had had the surgery 10 years back okay and she just felt although she had the ruin why but she was like i just feel so much better mm-hmm. everything is great mm-hmm. um i actually just sent her your episode of uh the um uh bloody hell what's it called the uh, uh transfer addiction oh Thank good Thanks. i just sent one. her that one because that's like something that i swear to god in the class <laughs> i'm an atheist by the way don't take <laughs> don't take swear to god literally uh, 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 it's fair we found a company that was founded by a bariatric surgeon for his patients mm-hmm. he is just trying to make their lives easier and so they have created a whole array of snacks and dinners and just all the foods you could possibly want that have protein in them and are delicious. Yeah. And they're so freaking good that we took them on tour with us because we tried them on a live. So you guys can always go back and watch that. Mm -hmm. And we liked every single bar. We were shocked. We don't want you guys to miss out. So go over to berrylife.com, use OSLP and get your discount. While we were in Florida, we got to visit one of our favorite bariatric surgeons, Dr. Donald Fridley at Surgical Associates of Bayonet Point. And when we say that they are patient focused, they are patient freaking focused. They tailor make all their plans to the unique needs of each patient. It's an in-body scanner. We both got to use it. We both got to use it. And you get to do it pre-op and post-op. So that way you can see all the differences and all the changes that happen. And he's also one of the surgeons that does his surgery with robotics. And we got to play with that. We too. did. So we were so, cool. we were so excited. And we want you to have such a special care that they give. So go over to SABPweightloss.com right now. Or give their office a call at 727-819-819. 9107. That's right. So, and tell them that the OSLP girls sent you and they're going to take great care of you. Yeah. I swear to me, in the class, there was one moment in the in all of the the Mm -hmm. weeks and weeks of education they gave us one moment of you might also have transfer addiction it could be shopping it could be gambling it could be drinking it could be drugs but it could also be exercise and wouldn't you be lucky if it was that Mm -hmm. anyway moving on and i was like that's it okay so i guess it's not that big of a deal because if they're but not going to make it a big deal, fucking it's deal. a huge fucking deal. Yeah. yeah, it happens almost to every one of us. We just don't know which <laughs> one we're going to get. And it changes over time. Like, I will be eight years this Saturday. Yes. Out. And yeah. mine was workout for, like, the first two years. I was, like, I did two a day sometimes. And then yeah, it yeah. morphed into, like, oh, I love dresses. Now I'm buying fucking dresses all the time, right? <laughs> now I've actually kind of morphed into a little bit of shoes. I'm starting to like a little bit of like Vans. And don't you know, I have like a lot of Vans now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I, it's, I'm not disagreeing over no, here. I'm it's like just, literally nodding my head like because things, it is true. It's true. Like it does evolve in Especially with the dresses. you. Yeah. I Literally, it is a problem because wait, is it a problem though? It is a problem. It it is, but isn't because I came from a family that only had I only had five shirts, two pairs of pants. I I can't. She knows. She's known me since I was a kid. I still cannot wrap my head around it. Like, yeah, people that don't shop, there's something wrong with you. Oh, that's well, it's, a, it's a money thing usually. I know. Thank no, you. No, I'm like, I can't afford have, more than five shirts and two pairs of pants. Here's the thing. I grew up, grew up in po- poverty. Like, I literally had nothing. And my mom yeah. went back to school at 36. She yeah, but you were a teenager then. Kids. Your shopping problem happened when you moved uh, out. No, but just <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Because you were poor. Hear me out. Okay. Okay. I grew up in poverty. My mom yeah. was a single mom. 
She went back to school late. My literally my mom taught me nothing about money. That's okay? true. Right. She, it, That's I had true. no con- concept of like saving or like what you have to pay your credit card bills. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, just like, 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 you're like, not just giving me free money. Um, but in my growth <laughs> as a human being, yeah. and I have now morphed into a bougie human being. Very oh nice. And mm-hmm. uh yeah, it is it's it's is fun until you look at your bank account. Um, but <laughs> I don't get it. Why do you only have five shirts? That's all I remember and a one hoodie. I don't. So that's like, what why, I lived though? with because that's, that's all I needed. That's I know. <laughs> but I just like even from like being if, with Zach and yeah. walking into his daughter's closet mm-hmm. and yeah. there's seven items. Yeah. It's you live by necessity. So like I only had my like even my um, bedding one set. You just wash it, dry it. Yeah. There's so many put things it back. I don't understand. Yeah. About that. Like I have two sets now because of Kelly. But and I, hand towels and right, hand towels welcome. as well. I realize I have hand towel money and I should probably buy more hand towels. She it's had so, I too. she had this square <laughs> of fabric. It's not even a hand towel. It, I, it, it's a scrap of fabric. It's pink and it would really just wash your face. And that's one that you would dry your face with. But that's how but tiny when it. you get done washing your hands in her bathroom. I'm like. <laughs> like Mel, like we You're just washing like a digit at a time, like, like I, a, I, a yeah, segment like it's of a like digit. patting one yeah. finger at a time, <laughs> and the, the it was like Mel, like do you need me to send it's, you like some sales on hand no, towels? Yeah, Are actually, you not I did. Sure on a did. color, like no. what's going on that this well, towel? See, if yeah. I was scared, if I bought the towel, I'd be out of money. <laughs> That's what happened in my head all the time. When you live poor and you don't know yeah, where shit's yeah. gonna come from, I literally buy one of everything and just let it ride. You're like, all right, how long do we last on this one? <laughs> okay, I have, a, I have one. a poor question for you. <laughs> okay, because I I didn't grow up with money. We didn't have. A, a bunch yeah right like, you, we, we, like we were okay yeah you weren't balling but you were su- yeah, yeah, you right. were you were good we were lower middle lower middle okay so when we were kids in the summertime we'd go visit my grandparents mm-hmm. my grandmother would make us bread with butter and sugar yes sandwiches yes which is a great thing to give your grandchild yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because then nope. they just go run in the field for four what? hours and come back and just get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> but my whole thing was I told this story to somebody at work the other day and they were like, oh, we put cinnamon on ours. And I was like, oh, y'all had cinnamon money. Mm-hmm. Like you, that's not. You had you were you did it for funsies. You'd like, you <laughs> yeah, you were like, let's let's see if we can combine these two things because if it doesn't work, we can replace it. Yep, it's true. They can <laughs> always get a new piece of yeah, bread. We do. We did not have cinnamon money. No, we had right. just the sugar. That's right. Yeah, yeah. even cinnamon then we were like... not allowed to touch the sugar. Just just a little bit. Just a little bit on time. Yeah. Yep. No, my mom. We were not allowed to touch the sugar. At that's all. that's just period. Weird. I mean, my mom never really used sugar, so oh really? Yeah, you know, she doesn't cook. <laughs> she doesn't do did, did your dad do the cooking or did you did y'all eat out a lot? Um, a little bit of both. Like we had like the staples, like of like four items that she would cook, and then everything else would be fast food restaurants. Even to this day, that's what my mom does, and she'll be like, I don't know why my tummy hurts. I'm like <laughs> I've been telling you for years, stop going out to eat and stop going to fast food. But, yep. you know, now, real quick. I could be did wrong. You say, hmm. When you said tummy, did say tummy, is that a thing your mom says or is that a thing that you say? I am probably got it from my mom. Do you still say t- if you're talking about like you have a stomach ache, you still say my tummy hurts? Yeah. <laughs> Ke- do you, Kelly, you do no, that too? No, I say my stomach hurts. <laughs> I'm like a little kid. Just- I, I feel like tummy that that's like, oh, does your tummy hurt? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you no. need to you definitely it. make me feel better about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My tummy hurts. Okay. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't hurt right now. But- my stomach hurts right now. My stomach. Yeah, yeah. My stomach. Which, sorry. Which quadrant of your abdominal area hurts? <laughs> the lower. <laughs> the lower. lower half. Lower left. The ho- oh, the lower, whole lower, lower quadrant. quadrant. Got the it. The two today, together. That's they, they do make one. It's the lower. Got it. Yeah. It's <laughs> the lower. 
Can I draw a diagram? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for YouTube, a I'm gonna pop up a diagram for those of you <laughs> that don't like know what a quadrant is. It yeah, is yeah, yeah. four squares. The yeah. lower two squares are what hurt right oh, now. Oh, that's your intestines. You're the gassy. You just told me I'm gonna die. Thank you. I said there are your intestines. How does that mean yeah, you're going to die? Because if my stomach hurts and you're like, that's your intestines. What's wrong with my intestines now? You probably that have. Means I'm going to die. You need Thank to you. probably take a poop. <laughs> I took uh, one yesterday. I'm fine mean, with that. Did you take one today? No, I so, only do. Like, it's only every other it's day. Time for, no, you're supposed to poop every day. No. You no, know, you're actually, not. the healthy. Oh, no, you're not. You're actually supposed to actually poop three times everybody. a day. Thank you. It's different for everybody, Mel. <laughs> Yeah, we talked no, to some doctors. Are you okay? No, I don't. I don't poop three times a day. I poop once a day, every morning. Yeah, if you poop three times a day, there's something wrong with you. No, I don't. Was it different before the surgery? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. No, I no. Think I guess the same. mine was always every morning before I got in the shower. Like I'm okay. totally routine s. It used to be when yeah. I would drink my coffee because you know yeah, yeah. coffee clears you clears out. out. But um, no, my. But body it doesn't. took a while for that to come back though, because it was like well, rabbit you're, poop. You're not eating enough. Yeah, it's like little nuggets yeah. to like actually have a full poop. When do you think it was? Six months? Yeah, probably six months. Six months. Right to when eat. you're starting to like ramp up how much you're eating. Yeah, my oh, yeah. my protein shakes would clear me out. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. oh my god! I really. I literally had the worst well, diarrhea the whole time I was on my two week pre- liquid oh, diet. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, like because that's all you're drinking is protein yeah, yeah. shakes, and I'm pretty sure I used regular milk at that time, not Fair Life. Mm. Yeah, so I'll do it. I'm pretty sure it was like all of full the- lactose because I don't use water. Like fuck that. Yeah, yeah. Water oh, with I protein suck at water. Shake, that's disgusting. Yeah, whoever does water with protein, I know you're out there. It's gross. Yeah, it's Stop gross. It. And you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> like, severely ashamed. Like, if you're broke, like, I'm giving you a pass. Yeah. But <laughs> if you have fair life money. That's right. You need to be drinking milk in your or you, shakes, or even just a splash will be fine because you can put it with yogurt. That's so that's what I was doing before. I actually had the same protein shake for two years. Yeah. I drink oh, that yeah. shit. And it was yeah. literally yogurt, strawberries, uh, my vanilla protein powder, and then a, like a little bit of milk and ice. Yeah. yeah. Blend that shit Don't up. It was put delicious. Water in it though. You got a little Nutri Bullet. You just put that in that little. Uh, mine was the Ninja. I have the Ninja guy. Ninja, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. your yours is like this. Oh, it's a thing. It's a present. Yeah, it's like a tube. Yeah, it's, oh, like it's you a just, huge. And oh, you just put everything in the tube, and you put the lid on it, and then you put the lid on the mixer. Yeah. Turn that shit on. I had the yep. bullet thing, and you just yeah. like turn it, and then yeah. let it like ramp up, and yeah, yeah. I I just saw a TikTok the other day. This guy showed that his blender, uh, base can screw on to a mason jar. Yeah, yeah. No and way. I was like, they can. No way. And then I took a mason jar and our large blender thing, and I was like, oh my god. Does it really? Yeah, it does. You didn't know that? No. Oh, that's been a Pinterest thing for a very long time. Oh, I have a Pinterest. I don't use it. Yeah, I, do. I don't. I'm not a Pinterest guy. Mm-mm. See? Yeah. I don't I'm back on Snapchat, anymore. though, I will say. Snapchat. Thank you. I'm a Snapchat. Fun. I started yeah. like six months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now it's, it's all day. All yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Snapchat's that's where I get our move. content. <laughs> it's easier on snap it, it is i can take a snap. video and a picture so fucking faster well, than on and instagram they have the little save button right next to right the next push to button so yeah. it's like you take the picture and then save it take yeah. the picture and like video need, save boom i boom, wish boom. that they had like save exit at the bottom oh, i do wish yeah. because the exits are top left yeah so if you're only using one hand like how like come on i know Get yeah. it together. We are totally talking about Snapchat right now. Sorry, Nima, back to you. Okay, so no, no, this is what this is all about. Yeah. How high of a weight did you get to? I got to four ten. Four ten. Four ten. So were you forty one or forty two? I was forty, I think. Forty. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You were overachiever at forty. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. ahead. Of, yeah, I was ahead of the ahead of the game. Okay. 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 And how did you find your doctor? Then? Yeah. Your surgeon. Uh, I was with Kaiser at the time. And Kaiser's great. Well, good news, bad news, right? Yeah, so like always. Kaiser's great when it when you need like six things done because mm-hmm. they just have a campus that you go do all the things. Yep. And there's no real wait because it's all in house. Yeah. And then the bad part is like you have like three doctors to pick from if you're lucky. Yeah. And if they're not around, then you're hosed. Yeah. 
So I got that doctor and he was like, I think you should do this. And then I was like, all right, fine. And then once I started doing it and signing up, oh, and at first he he said to me, you should do the nutrition uh, class. And I, I said, okay. And I, I went, I, it was online. Okay. I did one class and it was just like a zoom meeting with like four fat people and then a less fat instructor <laughs> who was saying like, how much did you like, I don't expect you to be like skinny mini, but like, you know, maybe don't weigh like 50 pounds less than me. That's fair. Don't, you know, that's not cool. And so they were like, so what did everyone eat this week? And like, nobody's answering the, like, oh, I had a sandwich. No, you did. It's a week. You understand a week? Yeah. A week is how many calories, all the, there's a, there's a thing to it. So I was not one cloud. I was like, I can't. So then I just signed up for the, the, for the thing. And the whole thing was like, I'm going to pull out, like, I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to get to the point. They're going to say yes. And I'm going to say, go fuck yourself. Cause I learned all the things I need to learn. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And the, the further along in the class I got, the more it started to make sense to me that, th and they just drill, drill, drill this into your head. Like this is a tool. It's not a solution. This is, this is one aspect of your, the, of all your arsenal of weapons and shit mm -hmm. that you've learned good and bad. This is something that's going to help you. This is not the end all be all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I like that. I kind of like do, that I too. I don't want this to be a put a button I push or mm -hmm. a, a line that I sign and then mm -hmm. everything goes away. Yeah. And I did that. And thankfully at the time we lived in this apartment that we were on the third floor, had an elevator. Okay. And I bought a reclining chair and for the first two, three days, I was just in my reclining chair. And then, and then I was walking around the outer perimeter of the, of the apartment building. Nice. Every lap was a quarter mile. So I could do a yeah. quarter mile, go back, sit, go, get up, go do that. And then slowly, but surely, well, I wanted to go walk in the street. I take the elevator down and then just walk flat, walk flat back elevator up. And then now we're in this condo and the, we're on the third floor of this condo there's no elevator so you love third floors that's i do I'm, that's what i'm gathering here i love stairs I, when we when we bought this place i told my wife i was like my ass is gonna look so good mm. going up and down these stairs all day yeah it's gonna be fantastic mm -hmm. so oh, i love gosh. stair stepper that's why i'm like yeah <laughs> i mean i yeah. don't mind get those it. legs and booty moving yes i don't mind the stair stepper i don't like stairs in my home no oh yeah like, right right that's stupid that's not <laughs> what anybody wants stupid. to do. I'm totally right. doing that when I build. There's going to be two floors. Oh, there will be totally Why? be two floors mm -hmm. in my house, but the upstairs is going to be a place I don't go. <laughs> but don't y'all live in a place where there's a lot of land that you can just build like a ranch style? Oh, yeah, I can totally. I don't like totally. ranch style homes. Yeah. But, but, but future you like in 50 years is going to be so thankful that you did that. Oh, I know. I know. I'm going to build the oh, just guest fuck, but fuck stuff her right upstairs. Now? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's upstairs. a problem for future me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I want, throw your ass I, in a nursing home and it'll be fine. You'll be with me. We'll be playing games. I, I will be totally with it. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. You think that you're going to be more with it than me yeah, at the old folks house. my house is not going to have any stairs that I need to go. Oh, up. my God. Yeah. I will just clear out an area and swap them. No. Make Dylan do it. Or you could just move in with Kelly. No. It's true. She has a flat house. No. <laughs> a flat I will house. Throw... You have extra bedrooms. Yeah. yeah, no. She her ass is in a nursing home. No. Nope. You <laughs> see this shit? Oh my I thought we we're supposed to go to nursing homes together. Uh, we, we can play ping had pong. That discussion. We have I thought never, we did. We have never had that discussion. We have had the zombie apocalypse. That's right, Emma. I'm supposed to kill you. Yes. Yeah. For those that but don't know this before conversation. Before anything happens, just... Yeah, I know. Yeah. First I, bite, first time we hear about zombies are coming, I'm dead. Yeah. See, I was confused, too. I was like, don't we need to get you to, like, a certain level first yeah, yeah, before no. I just, a like, level. kill... Right? I can't just kill you nonchalantly. I will I be need, the first oh. one dead. I need real reasons. Like You want to kill her shallantly? No. Nonchalantly. <laughs> yeah, shallantly. I do. I want to kill you shallantly. No, right. I don't yeah. want... <laughs> Like, I, I just want to see that you are the weakest link. Goodbye. And then I kill you. Know. Like, I want to have a reason that theory. We know that I am the weakest link. Goodbye. Oh my Why God. do you think that? Why is what is the because what is your... I will literally just be like, I don't care. I don't care. She doesn't like I will just literally moving. sit down in the middle of a field and be like, peace. 
You guys have fun. <laughs> you might be there a while. Because like, <laughs> they might not come for you. Right they away. might not. They might not. It depends on which zombies we're talking about. Which is why like, I need you to kill me. World War Z zombies or yeah, yeah, like yeah. Walking Dead yeah, zombies. That's I've right. That's World right. War Z. Oh, she won't that watch any of that. Like something I'd watch on my oh. are we, off time. Are no, we talking are you this about... way with all creatures of death? Like if if like if we found out vampires exist, would you be like, you know what, no, just go ahead and take me one. out? No, right? because I feel like if it's like an epidemic thing, <laughs> like if it came out of a lab and like all of a sudden the vampires like were created, yeah, yeah, yeah. then yes, kill me. Really? Then yes, kill you. Got yeah, it. because I will die. If it's like, vampire I'm beginning, like when you open up, like so say you're gonna watch like SVU. Yeah. And okay. there's that clip in the beginning where the <laughs> yeah, girl yeah. is yeah. like just minding her own business yeah, and then, the then dead. Then <laughs> dead. Yeah. Like that's me. Okay. I am the beginning of the episode. <laughs> death. And then you guys can be heroes or whatever you want to do. Oh my but, god. But isn't, in the, dead. Isn't zombie and vampire both make zombie vampire? It's not always kill. It's sometimes make into no i'm good it's true and you, you i don't, don't, don't want to so you don't want to live i will be dead so like, i'm not the one they're turning i thought when we were watching like, true that's not hold on i have a question though when we were watching true blood i could have swore that you said that you wouldn't mind being a vampire though no but i'm not gonna be the one they turn oh like i'm not you don't want to be, be turned they're not gonna look at me and be like that girl needs to be a vampire and be alive forever no but if you if you could be a vampire, it's dope, right? Because you get to sleep yeah, all day. I'm cool. I'm you cool with You could fly. That. You could turn into bats. You could turn into rats. You yeah. Could... I have I have another question then. Can they turn me into a vampire? Then I just turn you. Yeah, but here's so the thing: it's is not when you violent. become a vampire, you're not in the same headspace as you are. It depends on what type of vampire we are. No, because in the beginning, yeah, you're just yeah. hungry. Um, yeah, yeah, but I have to feed off the master. That's how that works. That's not how that works. It does. Again, it depends, I, you know it depends vampire... on the lore. I it know, it doesn't on the lore. lore. Okay, so Normally, this... I have to feed off of them, and then they give me someone to in feed to. So this... as long as you don't get caught, I won't have to feed on you. Yeah, but what I'm saying give is me a week. You, you're, you're going to be bloodthirsty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's I'm true. not going to be the person that you're like, I don't want to kill her. I want yeah. to change her. That's just not my role. I just this. won't see you for a week and then I'll come see you. Yeah, and then yeah. I'll change you. No. This will be <laughs> like, uh, like twice shy. Have yeah. you seen that movie? No. Yes. It's you have. Really? I think so. I think you and me are the only two people in the world that have ever seen it. It's Jim Carrey's like first movie. <gasps> okay, that's why because it's Jim Carrey. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. yeah. I love. It's a Jim fun Carrey. one. It's a fun vampire movie. Yeah, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think Mel's talking more about like the a Renfield type situation first before she becomes full vampire. Exactly. We haven't seen it. We haven't. I haven't gotten to see yet. that yet. Yeah. But I want to. No. Have you seen it? I have not, but okay. I've been watching what we do in the shadows like it's my fucking job. <laughs> what we do in the shadows. It's Why does that sound? Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's FX. It's amazing. Okay. And it's uh, uh, Taika Waititi. Uh, so everything he touches is, 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 is platinum gold. in my way. It's not even gold. It's platinum. It's platinum. platinum. It's, straight platinum. it's amazing. Ooh. It's straight up platinum. Okay. 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 All right. I love it. Um, okay. So. so back to your story. Um, question about Kaiser. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I hate Kaiser. Okay. Yeah. So can you, did they tell you to take Flintstone vitamins? Yeah. What was the vitamin game they told you to oh, do? Oh, so my nutritionist said not to. Nice. Oh, thank God. Okay. Yeah. They said that uh, a lot of people in the bariatric groups on Facebook were mentioning that. I asked them and then they said, this is the problem. This is the problem that I've had with the medical field in general okay. when it comes to bariatric okay. two things one everybody's different and i get it mm -hmm. i get that everybody is is different their bodies are different their their medical history is different yeah therefore the way that they're going to go through this is different i fully understand that but we don't i mean some people have two weeks of liquid some people have two weeks of fasting before they do some people have, like me one day some people have, have one day. uh they're they're now they don't do it was a puree stage and then a soft food stage. And now mm -hmm. it's just kind of like a, a liquid well, puree. You can't vibe willy nilly take pureed out of things. What do you mean? You can't just willy nilly be like, you know what? Kidding. 
you don't need to do PRA. No. Yeah, I did yeah, PRA Sage. Yeah. We all had yeah. to go through it. They <laughs> have to go through it. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it's okay. totally different now. And so like having those kinds of like those kinds of differences like kind of fucks with me a little bit. The amount of the amount of of medical hoops that I had to run through. This mm-hmm. is the craziest thing about my podcast is that if you go to my I mean if you look at the views that I have, the number one episode that I have mm-hmm. is medical hoops because mm-hmm. we live in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your- because everyone's like how much did it cost? How much yeah. did, you know, this and that. That's yeah. the only positive aspect for me is it didn't cost me a single cent. It yeah. cost me all my co-pays to go to all the office visits, get the ultrasound, to do the blood work. But yeah, but that's like bucket. 10 bucks, right? Yeah, every Some time. Some people are like 20, 25. 20, I'm 20, oh. yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, you know, five, six, seven, eight of those, like whatever, even 10 of those is like 200 bucks. That's what the whole thing cost. I didn't have to pay a copay for the anesthetist. I didn't have to pay for the surgeon. All that shit was fully covered by my insurance. Okay. Nice. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Said the atheist. But, <laughs> but then, but the problem was then my work insurance changed from Kaiser to Anthem. The what the fuck, fuck is Anthem? Anthem? Anthem Blue Cross. Oh, there we go. Like Blue what? Cross Blue Shield. Did they change their name? No, they're, they're. I think they're always Anthem, and then Anthem has Blue Cross and Blue Shield. What? I have Blue Cross <laughs> Blue Shield. Check your card. I don't even know where my card is. <laughs> of course. So we the- changed our insurance that way, and then the information from Kaiser didn't go into of the information at Anthem. So. They were like, yeah, so yeah, you lost you lost a bunch of weight. You're looking good. We're super hot. I'm like, I had the surgery. What surgery? I had the the gastric sleeve surgery. I did the whole thing. They're like, oh, we didn't get the records. I'm like, well, get them how now. do you get the records? <laughs> oh, we have to ask for them. Oh, why didn't you? There's that's all the thing. Well, we had you before. Like you thought I was just uninsured for like three years. You thought just nothing? Nothing happened. Nothing. And then nothing I didn't even ask. Year, nothing no happened. Question, over three years. No, no, like were you with Cobra? Did you do Obamacare? Did you do like zero? Nothing. And that's a lot of it's very hands-off over there. And mm-hmm. it, that's not my vibe. I don't like it. But I'm also like really good at one advocating for myself because I'm a dude and they listen to me more than they listen to ladies. It's true. Which is you're fucking. Not, it's not. You're not lying. No. Yeah. I didn't know that. And then my wife is like, she's like, oh, I went to the doctor. The doctor's a lady, and she's like, and I said this, and the doctor's like, ah, it's probably just your weight. And I was like, mm-hmm. but it's not your weight because when you were skinnier, you had that issue. When this other thing happened, you had that issue. When you've had this shot, the issue goes away. When the, you know, like, it's not. It has nothing to do with weight. Yeah. She's like, I know that. You know that. But they don't listen to me. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, I very rarely have like made a point to a doctor and then had them go like, mm, I don't agree. Most of the time it's like, yeah, okay, whatever oh, you want. That happens all the time. Yeah. Or I get the, the, also- the look of like dead, the dead stare. <laughs> That's my favorite. Yeah. And then I literally, cause of our doctor, like I just look I'm like, did you understand that? Oh, nice. Because like when I get nothing back and I'm like, yeah, mm, yeah. I'm actually like having like PTSD over here and you're just like chill shocked. Or something. I don't know what's going on yeah. with you. But they're quiet. And I, don't I don't like, like it. the doctors that come in and they're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. lose some weight. Yeah. Okay, lose cool. 20 pounds, right? It's always 20 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. It was always 15 for me. No, oh, well, I've always <laughs> been fluffy, so it's always <laughs> 20 pounds. <laughs> I mean, surprisingly, when I was at my high, I, my top, I really didn't get talked to about, your about weight? my weight that much. It was mainly like, well, your body's going to deteriorate. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have lupus, so yeah. they were more concerned about your autoimmune diseases. Yeah, I'm and sure. The Thirty medications, and they I was probably on. thought that one of the medications, which it was, prednisone, was making you more inflamed and bigger. I just, just made my face round and Mo- big moon face. It did. How I mean, how do you deal with all the shit that you deal with with regards to being overweight and add lupus to that uh-huh well lupus not, rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia oh and, right and how, how do you how do you not just stay in bed all day that's, oh, what, that's what she did yeah oh, okay yeah i yeah, visit her I, bedridden. I visited every yeah. thursday ever like once a month on a thursday i would go see her yep and i was on constant pain meds so right. most of the time i was just like mm, 
Like, like sometimes I didn't know if she even I would come home and tell my husband at the time of like, I don't know if Kelly even remembers that I was there, to be honest with you. Probably not. Yeah, because it was like oh. cloudy when I would talk to well, her. Well, because I was on prednisone. I was on the 30 medications. So I had like main medications, but then those medications came with side effects. So then I took more medications to offset the side effects from the original medications. And so then I would just like. It would be like, oh, I can't take that because of this. And then they'd be like, oh, OK, well, we'll give you this to make sure that you don't have constant diarrhea. OK, here's for your nausea that you're getting yeah, yeah. from this yeah. medication. And now you're going to gain 20 pounds. But you're going to gain some weight. Yeah. Right. And then you're also going to want to be careful with this medication because it's also a pain medication. So you can't take it with this medication. It, it's just it's a lot of like trying to figure out mm -hmm. what to do. Yeah. But it was interesting that nobody was like, hey, if you start losing weight, your body could stop freaking out. Yep. Nobody mentioned that in the first five years of me experiencing That's all insane. of this. Isn't that wild? Yeah. 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 It's definitely, there are some hoops that you jump through. And especially yeah. with all of the talk of GLP ones and all the hoops you have to go through to even get on any of these medications. Plus, most insurances aren't covering them. So yeah. tell me how I'm supposed to afford a twelve hundred dollar a month no. medication. No one can. No, you can't. Mm -mm. And, but the insurances are looking at it is we can make some money off of this. So yeah. but if they actually were like Hey, the, this could really help people. Yeah. Like, let's cover this so oh. that people are better and then they don't have to get all of well, this, this other stuff done. Well, we all know the medical field is ran on greed. Oh, 100%. But you want money? Well, really, it pharma. Is. Maybe pharma. It is for it. sure. Yeah. But can't yeah. you look at it and say, like, if you would just start covering these type of medications and treatment plans and not looking at it like obesity isn't a disease, that it's right. a choice. Yeah. It would save them so much money on and the they back would, end on the yeah. back end because they're not yeah. paying out for medications, surgeries, treat, yeah. other yeah. treatments. Well, ER visits. You know how many ER visits happen because we're obese? I think it's no. wild. Like it's how many? I need to look it up because I saw it once and it was insane because of strokes and sure. heart attacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can I tell you. A lot that. of that yeah. is just obesity related. And then you go to Vegas and then they have the heart attack grill. That if you weigh over like 300 pounds, you eat for free. And what? it's a burger, fries, and a shake you get for free if you're over 300 pounds. That's they fucked. have a giant scale outside on Fremont Street with a huge digital display. And I knew at the time I was over 300 pounds, but I couldn't bring myself to go stand on that scale. Yeah. And it was, I was like, I, cause you know, everyone's outside. <laughs> oh, and they put a, a, a smock on you, you know, like when, like when you're a patient in a hospital, a gown, what? they put a gown on you. You sit down, the milkshake comes in like a, like an IV drip that you drink from a, nope. like a straw. The servers all look like waitresses. They all look like nurses. So they come over and write you a prescription for your meal. And everyone's on the outside looking through the glass. And I was like, no, this is, this is theater. This yeah. is just like I'm a zoo animal for yep. your enjoyment to be like, look at these fat fucks no. eating all this shit because they're so fat. They're going to get fatter. And like a dude died. A dude, dude literally had a fucking heart attack. And the owner of the restaurant was like, hey, man, we make you sign a waiver. And I'm like, fuck me. Like, no. I understand being like, hey, man, my food's a little greasy. Fuck it. But not lean into this yeah. kind of thing and like this is the this is what it is it doesn't fucking matter nobody cares About nobody's paying attention yeah nobody does shit yeah. everyone just thinks oh it's, oh it's it's not a problem if you're an alcoholic mm -hmm. god bless you there's so many people oh yeah i still have a drinking problem they go oh i'm so sorry what can i do mm -hmm. next time we hang out i'll make sure but because food someone said this to me the other day they were like i used to go to um to oa meetings and What's I was like, oh, I've, I've over, never been over, to one. Um, uh, Overeaters Anonymous. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never heard of it. And I was like, I, I go, I didn't realize that was a thing. And they were like, yeah, I mean, there's 12 steps for everything. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, <laughs> you can abstain from everything. 
Yeah. You can abstain from drinking, boozing, from fucking gambling. Really? You could abstain from fucking. You can abstain mm-hmm. from all the things. Yep. But mm-hmm. you got to eat, dummy. You you can't not eat. Thank you. You can't so abstain way, from food. No. You can abstain. So this is what they do. You know what they're, what they're, uh, I don't think the word is abstination. Their ideology. Eng- English is difficult. That's what I got to say. <laughs> I Same. Mean- no, the things English, that the things that they <laughs> the things that they agree to like not do is like I will abstain from eating in my car. Okay. And yep. like that's their okay. Like I I'm not drinking anymore. And in OA you go I'm not going to eat in my car anymore. I'm okay. going to have a meal time. My breakfast is eight to nine thirty. I can eat anything. I could have two cheesecakes in from eight to nine thirty. Nine thirty breakfast ends. And I don't eat again until 12.30, 12.30 to 1. And that's my lunch. And it's just that that becomes the times that you can eat and the thing, the the time okay. slot that you can eat. Yeah. That makes sense, like, though. Yeah. It does. Because you heard, have to. Because yeah. I'm like, yeah. bro, I literally I identify as a food addict. Like, yeah. I Absolutely. would literally and I can prove it. This just happened two days ago. If I can. My cousin Maya has these mini. uh chips ahoys right yeah. the little guys yeah. yeah yeah and i didn't know that she had them so they've been actually in the house for over a week right yeah had no idea but once they were out on the counter and the thing was flipped so i could see it like and i was cookie monster like <laughs> she was at work and no one was around and it was like 9 30 at night and i was all this is mine and i grabbed it and i was like i only have like five yeah. and then five turned into ten and then she came home and I was like, hey, I'm really sorry. I had some of your your cookies. And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And I was like, I'll get you more cookies later. And so she was under the impression that I ate or ate them all already. And since, yeah. I, since she gave me that notion that she thought I ate them all, I fucking was like, I'm going to eat them all. Yeah, because yeah. now you just gave yourself permission. I gave myself permission. Right. And then I finished the fucking bag. And then yeah. literally last night, she's like, hey, did you actually finish that bag? And I go, yes, it did. <laughs> I totally, yeah. did. I totally did you cannot Sorry. leave this there's something about cookies yeah you <laughs> cannot leave around me and this is new this is never mm-hmm. was like this one before surgery like it happened two years ago with a barbecue my friend came over with cookies like literally cookies from the bakery and yeah, yeah. i passed by it three times already had five it was <laughs> wild i actually told her she had to take them home i was like i can't be a- I- there's something about chocolate chip cookies i'm a fucking Theme. that is the funniest i really thought that was going in a different direction like i passed by him three times third time i was like i'm gonna have one no You're like i passed by him three times i had five i'm yeah. like it escalates ninja? very quickly, quickly. it's very quickly. just like picking the pocket of the fucking uh-huh. boy walking by sneaking one like your oh like what your it grandma's does, giving you a it, the first round it one went next to my side because <laughs> no one can see it and one was in my mouth so it looked like i only had one but i really yes. had a second one hidden did that twice until yes. the third time I only grabbed the one and then I was like, fuck, that's what I just ate five in like 30 minutes. This is not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Does the same thing happens with me with garlic bread? Yeah. Like if my aunt Nini oh, actually makes garlic bread one per person, fine, because yeah, yeah. we all get our one. But when right. there's too much out there, I get one before everybody comes in to eat. Yes, yes. I get yes. one after they eat. I get one yeah. with my meal. And then they all think I've only had one, but really I've had yeah. three already. It's I can't. It's garlic bread and chocolate chip cookies. It's because you justify it in your brain. I know. It's the when you walk. Well, into also the it. way that you were raised too. Like the way I was raised was my, my parents are skinny. I mean, they work at it, but they're skinny. But my familially were were like very fat people that have like cholesterol and, and uh blood sugar and all that. Okay. Diabetes, right? Yeah. And so, so I at home to eat how my parents want me to eat on my way home from school would stop by McDonald's yep. and get two cheeseburgers, a large fry, this, that, the other thing in the morning on my way to work, I'd go to Starbucks and get a venti sugar, sugar, mm. sugar drink mm-hmm. with two cranberry bliss bars to, as, as Mel put it, I would have a cranberry bliss bar in the car. Mm-hmm. I would leave a cranberry bliss bar in the car for the drive home yep. and I would take one with me to work like my one treat, right? Yeah, guys? One. Yeah. No. Plus a bagel because breakfast plus, yeah. Yeah. you know, egg bites in my back pocket because of protein. And because, you know, so then you, you start doing this and just calorically increase. And then you mm-hmm. eat on your way home, you get home. And then your parents are like, Oh, we made chicken with rice tonight. And you're like, Oh, I'd love some. And oh, then you I'm have so a little hungry. bit of rice. 
and a little bit of chicken. And they're like, I look at you, huh? You're doing yep. great. You get the praise. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You want a little no salad? Idea. You're like, no, nah, I couldn't. I'm so stuffed. <laughs> and all the food we've been love. eating all day. Yeah. yeah. It would be mozzarella sticks on the way home. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It would be at Sonic yeah. or at Arby's. I'd be like, getting one of those today yeah. arby's arby's can get it dude i don't know what they're doing over there but they're doing it all right fucking the uh jack in the box is just a bunch of potheads and oh, i yeah. i love them for that yeah that's super dope but uh, it's not my vibe <laughs> but arby's is like adults yeah it is that know what the fuck is up their market sandwiches get the fuck out that's of here my There's, jam. nobody can touch their shit yeah so fun fact my first job was arby's for two and yeah. a half years from 16 to 18 and really until i got <laughs> pregnant with dylan that's when i stopped working at arby's yep and yeah it's the market fresh sandwiches it's the curly fries it's the mozzarella sticks like and you're right it is adult it's a very adult food yeah, yeah. and it's even like bring on the meats that's for yeah. adults yeah. that is yes. not for children that is not for children yeah. to yeah. to they respond don't have happy to. meals they don't fuck around like that wendy's no. is like a very like we got square patties for why what do you yeah. why the bun is round you dummy yeah why did you make the whole all right I whatever can't. we can't we can't digress <laughs> i can't even i can only odd so what i guess that kind of rolls into a, a question for me is one what was your like food item before surgery mm -hmm. and yeah. then what is it what's your food like now my like the one thing that i was like i have to mm -hmm. i can't not yeah I'm, uh i think before surgery there was I think, I mean, I don't, I, I'll be honest N now it's sweets and yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of always been sort of sweets, but mm -hmm. I would eat. Oh, I'll tell you what it was before rice. Uh, and, okay. and I'll tell you why mm -hmm. this is the weirdest thing. And I've never told anybody this before. Ooh. It's so fucking weird. It's so <gasps> weird, but you have such a huge listenership that I just need one person to be like, to I comment, do that too. Samesies. Okay. Okay. That's See. it. Just okay. say, you don't have to say what it was. Just same Z's. Same Z's. Okay. To this thing. Okay. I would eat rice until it, <laughs> until it felt like I was going to choke. Oh, you know, like when, when you're you so feel it up here. Yeah. All the way up in your, let me move my beard out of the way so you can see. There we go. All the way up in yep. here. Okay. 1000%. I didn't do it on purpose, but that's how much I love rice too, though. Yeah. White rice in my pork chops. Yeah. Yep. White rice mm -hmm. and and also you got to eat the rice, like you, the, all, anything you can eat the next day. I don't heat. I'm also really bad about, I don't reheat shit. The uh, next day I eat everything cold. I don't give a fuck. Pizza, yeah. fucking steak. I'll eat it cold. I'm an animal. Rice. You got to. You the have next to. day is fine. But the day after that, you got to sprinkle a little water. You do. Put it in the microwave with a wet towel on mm. top. Got to get it to re-steam. Yep. It's a whole fucking process. So instead, well, now after the surgery, I can only have like fucking three spoons of rice. Yeah. yeah. And as an Iranian person, like, fuck me. I had, this is my 80% uh, of our dishes are rice plus. Yeah. yeah. Everything is in my whole life is rice plus X. Mm -hmm. And now I can only have X and like fucking three spoonfuls of rice. Yeah. I mean, but you still get the rice. You I do. do still get it. No, I do. You do. For sure. So rice yeah. on the back end. Yeah. yeah. So what do you, what's your normal eating habits now? So now it's, I, I've been trying to, I, so I was 410 at the highest. I got to 390 before my surgery. I okay. dropped all the way down to 245. Damn. Good so job. I lost 145, which was great. Yeah. Yes. Then I gained 25. Okay. So I gained about 10% of my weight mm -hmm. back. Okay. Uh, well, I, yeah, well, actually I got to 275. So I gained, I gained 20% of the weight that I lost. Okay. Back, which is what they say is normal. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm miserable right now. I okay. hate being 275, but okay. now I've picked up these bad habits yeah. of eating again. I got comfortable again. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to, to fight now is carbs. Okay. I mm -hmm. am hooked man like yep. that was the worst fucking thing that could have happened to me after the diet and every listen as much as people want to like talk about these groups in for for sleeved uh surgeries on facebook and shit are so helpful they are helpful but they're also mean as fuck yeah they like, can get dirty you want to get your 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 fucking shit handed to you 
go over there yep. and say something stupid like, do you think I should have a Diet Coke or a Coke Zero? Neither. These motherfuckers will annihilate your ass. Why yep. did you do the surgery in the first place? If you're just going to go back to soda, you fucking deserve to get fat again. Don't do it. Don't buy. And the guy's side is worse. The guys were like, yo, man, how long do you think it'll be until I can have a mountain? Do I really want one? And these guys were like vicious. They're like, bro, have one. Have one and throw up for three hours and then you'll never fucking crave a Mountain Dew again. Holy shit. But you're so stupid to want. And I was like, Jesus Christ, man, take it easy. You know, the like, guy's asking a question. He's a fucking. Like reel oh, that shit back. Person. I think sometimes <laughs> people go like real hard, like real hard. Yeah, and real there's sometimes hard. where you're just like, whoa. Mo back turbo. The fucking truck back up because <laughs> I feel like all I did was ask a question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't need you. I didn't ask for you to jump down my throat. I will <laughs> let you know if I choose to have that happen. But right. It's like they don't need to be on attack mode. No, but yeah. they are because they're like, and I feel like I was a little bit like that. I was very judgy when it came to car came to cars. Oh, yeah. But yeah, as yeah. like as you grow, because I, it was drilled in my brain. No yeah. carbs after surgery. No carbs after surgery. And that's what I thought I needed to do to be successful. Who drilled that in your brain? All of the groups that I was in, all mm. of the people I watched on Instagram at that time. Yeah. Just I, I mean, Zero. everybody was like, just like no carbs, high protein, no carbs, high protein. And so, so I when think, did you have your surgery? Uh, it was four years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it yeah. was be it was right as like Instagram really started blowing up with like everybody sharing their stories. And so all I saw was no carbs. Yeah. yeah. And so I got very judgy with people like not like yeah. texting them or anything, no. but I would just be like, why are they even eating carbs? Why did they even do the surgery yeah. if they're not going to follow the plan? But I think instead I should have been informed like, hey, it's no carbs for like the first year six yeah. months yeah. but yeah, eventually yeah, yeah. you are going to have to add carbs back mm -hmm. in and yeah. i don't think i was under that and impression. it wasn't big the reason why you guys can't have carbs the first year isn't because the carbs are bad no it's because you can't fit Thank more you. than just the protein yeah in. it's right. just, it's just really a size issue it's well i mean ain't it always right so <laughs> we need to stop is. thinking yeah so I'm thinking that it's going to be, oh, it's because it's bad for you, bad for you. No, you actually need carbs. You, you do need carbs. It, carbs are actually what gives you energy. Like protein yeah, yeah. And, and carbs give you energy. Yes. And you definitely need that if you're going to go work out. You can actually make your self feel really sick by not. By so, not eating carbs. By not yeah. eating carbs beforehand. So, yep. guys, yeah. carbs are not bad. It's just that, I mean, I get it. My Mine's carbs too. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's hitting all those awesome like serotonin and dopamine things. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yay, yeah. hi. Yeah. And that's why Melanie can't stop with bread or cookies. So I get it. But I mean, I was not bad. I was really afraid that my obsession would with pasta was going to transfer over and it didn't at all it didn't like mm -hmm. i can have a couple bites of pasta and i'm like yeah it's fine it's just it's there yeah yeah like because she was a pasta queen i eat pasta all the time yeah. i attribute most of my weight gain to either yeah. ben and jerry's or pasta yeah oh god ben and jerry's mm -hmm. get it yeah ben and jerry's with cookies crushed in it yeah Oh, you That's took true. it up and Oh, I I level like she's so, bougie. So here's where everything. here's what I do. I think you're using the word wrong, but go ahead. <laughs> I don't think so. Because with what her she can't have flat water. You know what she has to have? Sparkling water. I have to have sparkling water. I don't like flat water. I like sparkly mm -hmm. water. Like yeah. it's in the fucking name. And always you liked it before the surgery too? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So did you have to like quit because I, I know a lot oh, of people still that are like years after surgery and they're like i don't do carbs and or carbonation uh -huh. yeah yeah and no, i'm like i drink I... like a diet coke a day do you mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i yeah. mean some people can some, some people, people can't. can so i waited about a year and a half to two years after yeah. and yeah. then but i my my water intake was so low yeah. because i much prefer to drink bubbly water over flat water mm -hmm. and yeah. now that i drink bubbly water again and i don't yeah. feel guilty about it right i hit my water goal yeah. every day That's so true. you i just had to figure out what worked for me but yeah. no i so like the lines like here 
And I like to go all the way up to the line and then stick a foot over to figure yeah, yeah. out like she what likes to play with the fucking line. The outcome yeah, would yeah. be, and then I come back over to the other yeah. side. So I like to go as far to that I as I it. possibly can. Like I have a cute story about that. We went to some little. Um, the, oh, we went to the the Goat Tavern in Chicago. I don't know if you, if you've ever been. It's where the tavern? SNL uh, sketch, the the cheeseburger cheeseburger sketch. Oh, I'll, I'll send it to you. That's you can check cool. It. Okay, okay, okay. So we went there and we checked it out, and we we were there with some friends of ours, and and our friends have this cute little daughter, and she's so innocent and so adorable, but she was also very like. Like, okay, we, we need to get a chair. There was like literally like nobody else in the restaurant. She's like, we need to get an extra chair because there's like six of us or five five of us. And so we need one more chair, but the table's got four chairs. So we got to ask somebody to add a chair to the table. And I was like, mm, there's nobody. You could just grab a chair. She's like, we need permission. Oh. And I was like, oh, this is not, I'm not going to be, you're not I can't. My, yeah, you're I'm, not. Yeah, that, I'm not, I like, I get, I you can parent your child however you want to parent your child. You could raise your kid to be uh-huh. ripe. I'm going to be the uncle that's going to be like, hey, we're going to break some rules, kid. Yeah. yeah. And like, we're going to start with grabbing a chair and just bring it to the table. Yeah. One thousand percent. So we did that. We brought the chair over. And then there was a side room that had like a curtain to it. And I was like, look at that room. And she's like, yeah. And I go, there's a curtain. You, you know what that means? She's like, yeah, you can't go in. I go, yeah, you can't go in. Right. She's like, yeah. And I pushed the curtain back a little bit and I go, look at my foot. <laughs> and the line, the line was like right here. And that was the room. And this is where we were. And I took my foot and I went. <laughs> just like just toes in the room, just toes just, just right in the room. And I go, I go, I just, I just did that. And she goes, you did. I go, what happened? She goes, nothing. Mm-hmm. I go, do you want to do it? And she's like, nah. And then I did it like two more times. And then she's like, and then when we were leaving, she's like, hey. And I go, what? And she like just put her toes in the, Aww. In the room. Like, That's so cute. <laughs> You're correcting yeah. her. See, I'm yes. a, me and you are a lot more alike because like <laughs> we'll we play with the line a little bit. Kelly jumps over the line. Yeah. No. She makes a off. leap over. Kelly's sitting honest. in that room. Yeah, like she's but, in the yeah, fucking I'm already, room. I'm queen of this room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because when we were at the <laughs> when we were at the White House, yes, I did touch one of the photos, and I was not allowed to touch. That's the thing. Is like I'll touch and I come back. But Kelly, yeah, Kelly would go into a room. I would. I'm sure. I mean, if there's not a line there, or like if there's not like ropes <laughs> roping it off, like I'm gonna go sit in a fucking chair. <laughs> I had. I have. I love. Rembrandt as a painter mm. so much and I, and a lot of his works at the Getty and I've been there and I've seen it and I remember looking at it and the docents there don't give a fuck they're looking at you know other people around they're, they're not really paying attention well, what are they going to do and I just thought to myself you know I could touch his canvas I could touch the canvas that he touched yeah yeah okay, I could see it but I could touch, touch it, it. And I'll tell you, the, this is the weirdest thing. I don't know what it is. Ever since I went to England last year, I started making this joke about how they just have old shit all through their country and there's no velvet rope oh, yeah. stopping you from getting into it. I went to JJ Fox, which is one of the oldest cigar shops in, in the world. Okay. And they had Winston Churchill's chair, not in a glass vitrine out there you could sit on it whoa and so i was telling people i'm like you could sit on it you could touch it you could smell it you could lick it <laughs> and then there was this old wall this old roman built wall and it's england so that like the the joke about europe is in europe they think two hours is a long drive and in america they think 200 years is a long time and it's not true the other way around, right? For us, two hours is like normal. Yep. And for them, 200 years is like, who gives a fuck? Because yeah. we've been around for like thousands, thousands of, of years. years. Yeah. So they have this like 2000 year old Roman built wall. And I'm like, this wall was built when like Jesus existed. Yeah. You understand that? Like, this is like a Jesus wall. You understand what I'm saying? This is crazy to me. And I go, and you can do, you can climb on it. You could break a little piece of it off and put it in your pocket. You Whoa. could touch it. You could lick it. And my wife was like, why do you just want to keep licking stuff? I was going to yeah, ask you, actually. Yeah. What's with the, I mean, do you lick I don't, a lot you of could taste. You could taste 2,000 years ago. You could see what 2,000 years ago tasted like. like. I mean, I like plus, it. you know, smog and cars. And so <laughs> I was thinking that with the painting, with the Rembrandt painting, I was like, I could touch it. I was like, I could lick it. And then, but that idea to me was like, I gotta, I gotta probably take like two steps back. Cause I'm, I'm going to fuck around and like, 
try to like take it off the wall or something like, I, like yeah I, you I don't fuck like around it, and find out in england yeah yeah like, no. i i don't feel like that's a good place to test we'll that touch theory. and lick and smell things but let's not grab <laughs> Let's not take I think the painting off the wall. Yeah, like stay you know, there. but that's my that's my problem, right? And that's why, like, right, like right after my surgery, like, a, like I think maybe like two, three weeks after my surgery, I was walking around, and these like really nice ladies that live next to us were like, "Hey, you know, you're always so nice to us, and we haven't seen you walking around as much." And I was like, "I had this surgery, and blah blah blah." And they're like, "Oh yeah, well, we hope you feel better." What's your unit number? And I said the unit number. They were like, "Great." And I go back home and I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, you know, these ladies came by and they're so nice and whatever. Knock on the door. I go answer the door. There's a little note on the on the plate and it says, um, we hope you have a sweet and and uh, speedy recovery from your surgery. And it's a plate of warm brownies. They're still warm. What the fuck? Son of a bitch. And they're like, son of a bitch is right, Kelly. Because yeah. I'm like, these motherfuckers, they don't, I didn't tell them I had the sleeve surgery, yeah. but I'm like. Well, that's what they send is something sweet up to make you feel better. I can't have sugar. I can't have carbs. I can't have any of this shit. So I just gave it to my wife and I was like, I need you to eat this. And I need you to tell me how amazing it is. And God bless her. She was sitting there eating them. She's like, I don't know why they put dirt in this. And there's like worms in here. There's like a rock. It's like disgusting. I'm just going to finish it up so you don't accidentally trip and fall and eat something. (laughs) I love it. That's good support though. She's got your back. That's my... My fear is if I'm like, I can't touch the painting because if I touch the painting, I'm going to want to smell the painting and then I'm going to want to lick the painting and then I'm going to want to grab the painting. Yeah. Yeah. So I just need to stand behind the partition. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I am with this now is like, I I just need to not have cookies in in the house. And it's a little black and white thinking. And I get that. No, but I I think everybody's allowed to feel however they want to feel. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to food. I said it in the beginning. You don't bring a crack into a crack house. The same fucking thing. (laughs) It is. You don't bring the cookies home. You don't bring the garlic bread home. Like If it's not here, I don't eat it. If it's there, I will fucking go ham. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you order crumble cookies and you can't just order one, you order the six because you want to try all the flavors Yeah, that that can't happen. Then you become the best Mm -hmm. neighbor in the world and you go knock on your neighbor's door and say, I got you six halves of a crumble cookie. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) So you want to hear a story? Another weird thing about me. I don't I don't like neighbors. Yeah. Like, I don't like that weird about you. No, I don't no, like them. That's very on don't par. Knock on my door. I don't want a relationship with you. I want you to stay in your own house. Don't look me in the eye. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't even look at the fucking cookies because I know you have put poison in them. Oh my God. Leave me alone. She's ridiculous. What happened to you? <laughs> I mean, ah! several things have happened to me in my life. That, from but from your neighbors? No, I just don't. Okay, so here's here's the root of the problem. Yeah, I need to know. I lived in a, it was a townhouse with my mom. And there was two of them. And me and my, my mom and my sisters loved to meet our new neighbors. Okay? Love it. They go up there and introduce themselves. They want to, like, find out if they have kids or what their backstory is. Like, all of this stuff shit and i would be in the house being like i don't care i don't care like i don't i I want you to stay in your house but they never did anything to you no i just i I feel like it's unnecessary to know your neighbors like it's like it's cool that's why she won't make it in the zombie apocalypse yeah, you have I don't to be able know to ha- know I your know. neighbors she'd be the perfect like person community. in the zombie apocalypse because because mel you and i are going to be like i wonder what's in that room and, and, and like, i'm like don't no. be stupid asshole we're going to the <laughs> fucking yeah this that's is true like no i'll have my knife no we'll mel has weird things of like she doesn't like people facetiming her yeah don't you fucking face oh, yeah, not without a warning thank you oh, no way yeah weird. i not think it's rude warning yeah. i need to know who's on the other side of that where the fuck you are like who's all with you yeah like why am i just divulging information facely to a crowd of people no thank you no yeah. thank you and i feel that way about my neighbors nope <laughs> Nope. <laughs> but ours is so different. That's like we're not the same this thing. is it's violating. The same thing. No, ours it's, is violating. Okay. Say you walk out your door, you're in a, a parking lot of neighbors, right? And you have to talk to them and then explain. <gasps> like neighborhood that, watch? No, like you have to like if you're walking through and your neighbor is like 
Co- like I, you full smile co- and I, not no. Going. Look at the ground. Look no. at the ground. I don't want to meet your eyes. I don't want to know your dog's name. Well, that's no, also I know why. That's a lie. Okay. I do want to know your dog. I know. I don't s- want to know you. I know that we're so off track, but here I have to tell a little bit of a story with Kel because the whole look down thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. real. I was in Disney with her and the sleep dietitian, Jamie. They yeah. don't look at anything down and then exactly where they're going i'm watching people looking at them gawking at them i'm literally behind them like i'm like their fucking guard because i'm like no like i'm looking at them looking at me looking at them looking at at these girls like it is you two are so perfect i can't even i want (laughs) this is all i want i want (laughs) I want a TV show. I want a cartoon. I need an animated <laughs> oh, series. Oh, I like it. Oh, yeah, I do an animated series. The Adventures of Kelly and Mel. And it's a yin and the yang. I can already envision it. One of you is yin. Guess. And one of you is yang. <laughs> I don't know which one I'd be. No, I'd be yang. Yeah. Nobody. You're yin. You're yin. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. I'm so yang. Sorry. I'm yang. Yeah, yeah. You're yin. the yang. You yeah. know that. Fine, yeah. fine, 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 fine. She's white, I think, though. I think it would be so. Yeah, yang is white. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, with yeah. the black. Yeah, dot. because you always wear white. I always wear black. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's where I was going right. with that. I mean, it's just, I, I think it's. Outfits. It's fine. <laughs> I want to. Here's what I think is like, I like. Oh, have you seen this? Uh, there's a show with Eugene Levy called The Reluctant uh, Reluctant Traveler, I think it's called. No, but I love Eugene Levy. Yeah. yeah. I love him too. And and he's just like, I hate traveling. I hate going places. I hate like interacting with people, like as nice as he could say it <laughs> as, <laughs> for a Canadian to say something like that. You know, That's he's true. like, I just want to like stay in the hotel, get room service and just like shut, shut the world out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, I want to go explore and see all the things and go dog sledding and fucking shoot an arrow and see the northern lights and have a jacuzzi Uh experience. And jacuzzis are my favorite. And so he's like, (laughs) he hates it. And I just all I'm thinking is I want you two to go to Paris together, like the the city of people watching and like touristy as fuck. The whole city is like Disneyland. In real life, it's like fucking literally is anywhere it? you go is like a photo op and a Kodak photo position. Oh, you place. would love it, Kelly. Oh, it's I'm not like, saying I don't want to go. I'm just saying that it's not Disneyland or, or world. Disney World. Like it's no, just but I not. think you would hate Paris so much, and that is the most Parisian <sighs> response <laughs> to Paris is to hate the fucking tourists that are there, whilst you are a tourist, tourist yourself. yourself. Like, I just would love uh, that whole series just needs to be like Kelly and Mel take over the world. I mean, we have said that before. Yeah. <laughs> so I there mean, you go. It's not far off. It's from on the plans. plans. Yeah. Yes. It's not far off. I love However, it. I will. I will love it. I will love Paris mm-hmm. until about 830 at night. And Why? then I want to go to bed. Does something happen yeah, at 830? Sleepy time? It is. It is sleepy. See, that's why I ha- we have to have a third because I I want to go out. I will stay in have my a- ass all night at Disneyland or but, Disney World all night Shoney. until they close. I will close that bitch down. Because you paid so much money to go there. No, no, that's just her. <laughs> no, I will close but, that bitch down. I went. I'm the one leaving at eight thirty. I'm like, fuck yeah. this place and go somewhere else. So <laughs> when we were in Disney, Mel was off on an adventure, and I, me, and Jamie were going to go to dinner. And she gets yeah. this call from an old coworker of hers, and she's like, "Hey, I just saw you were in Disney World. I have two tickets to the after party show at Epcot." Oh, do you, yeah. do you and your friend want to go? And we're like, oh, yeah, you can't say no to that. Free food, yeah. free entrance, yes, yeah. free rides. So we go, and we are there until like two o'clock in the morning. Awesome. Okay. And That's we, the latest I think and, I've ever seen you up in like a decade. Yeah, and but we're in New York, and it's like six o'clock, <laughs> and I'm like. Okay, I'm ready to go to We're bed. We're in fucking New York. And just, yeah, thank like, you. I, I am ready. I have to have a person with bed. me for this shit. Because I ha- like in New Orleans, but same if thing. If you want to go all night, 
in Disneyland or Disney World, I am your girl. Yeah. Why? How? Because what is that? I know. So... In New Orleans, I had to hang out with dad. I mean, not that I had to. I love dad Rob. So that made that easy. But like instantly she's like, we're going to go back. And I thought that in the morning that I was going to be the same. No, I was around people. I was you like, you thought you were going to be go. the same as we left to go to dinner. Oh, that's right. To go to dinner. Once she's dinner like, happened. Yeah. Early night tonight. I'm going to like, we'll go back. And I'm like, mm-hmm, OK, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. All right. Awesome. All right. Cool. Yeah. Because she go knows me. Early. Yeah. No. And then everybody's like, OK, do we want to have like one last drink and blah, blah, blah. Because in my head, I'm going to bed. Yeah. People, I am going to bed. That means I'm going to put on some trashy reality TV. I'm going to yeah. have my pills and I'm going to pass the fuck out because mm-hmm. I don't want to do any more. It's true. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So then we're it's the end of dinner. We all have our night one last drink because I'm like, cool, this is going to make me tired. And Mel's like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go out to Bourbon Street with them for a little bit. And I'll meet yeah. you. I'm like, OK, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I was out till 3 a.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, you bitches go and do all oh, the things wild. you want. If don't it's care. not before nine o'clock, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I just because don't. your batteries charge differently. Yeah. Like my 1, battery 000. charges with people. Yeah, me too. Yes. That I really enjoy and places like I, well, when we went to England, I went to Exeter and then I would wake up at like seven in the morning and go for a run down by the river wow. and then go and check out like three churches because I'm just obsessed with old churches okay. and then come back and be like, OK, so <laughs> <laughs> there's this place for breakfast, that place for breakfast. We can go down by the river and have breakfast there. We pass by the 2000 year old wall. We can lick it. <laughs> We can go over to. We can lick it. We can lick it, and then we can go over here and check out this church if you want. And she and my wife, God bless her, she was just like, "Listen, dude, I'm like, I'm all the way in with all the things, right? Just, I don't want to see a bunch of churches. I'm like, that's just not my vibe. Yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, cool, cool. We don't have to see. I'll see all the churches. You don't have to see. I got lost one time, and I ended up bumping into one of the nicest churches I've ever. It was like a little tiny. It looked like a cave church. It was the fucking coolest thing. <laughs> I, I totally lost. Just bumped into a bumped into a pub. Went and had a pint. Went bumped into hell another. Yeah, man. Bump into a pub. I get lost a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Like yeah, a buddy of mine wanted to get me over a, life. You get lost a lot everywhere I go. Oh. I my favorite story about this, and I, and and I swear it's a short one, but I a buddy of mine. Uh, we're gonna go to the movies in Irvine at the Spectrum. And we get down to like the center piece of the of the of the hub. And he's like, where is the movie theater? Because we got to meet our girlfriends. And I was like, I am 99% sure it's to the left. And he's like, OK, so we should go Ooh. right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm I'm telling you, I've been here more than you. And he's like, just let's go right. And it was less than a block. Right. right. We would have gone all the way down uh-huh. and then f- un- un- either all the way to the end, which is like a mile, or we would have bumped into a directory that turned around and then I would have never heard the end, of it, which I still don't hear the end of it anyway. But that's, still... that's how bad I am. So you went to England last year? Yeah. So how was traveling for your first time after surgery? It was that, I mean, those non-scale victories of not having to ask for a seatbelt extension, uh, not having to stress or worry about, I mean, we're still bigger people, right? so we still like to have like an aisle to ourselves, but we, but it's not, it's not mandatory. It's not necessary. Yeah. Although that flight's a motherfucker. It's like a 10, 11 hour flight. So from LA. Oh yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a bear, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lot easier. It was a lot better kind of just overall, um, the, the traveling on the train, the traveling on, uh, all these different things. It was just, it, it just felt, and also like I was the thinnest I've ever been uh, post-surgery. I was the, in the best shape. Although to be fair, I'm probably in better shape now because I run more now and I walk more now, Okay, but I was in really, really good shape at that time. So I was like, just loving everything. I'd go run by the river and I'd go run in the mornings and just enjoy everything. My uncle lived in, in like the countryside. And so I'd go run in the forests oh, over wow. there. Oh, fun. I mean, it was, it was like a magical, magical trip that, Oh, I'll, I'll, this is the weirdest non-scale victory, but I, oh, but I, I have to it. share this with you. Okay. 
So my uncle lives in Effingham, which is like a, a city that is named after someone who hates pork. Okay, good to know. <laughs> How do you say that again? Effingham. Effingham. Oh, just Effingham. Effingham. Okay. <laughs> Effingham. What are we having for dinner tonight? Ham. Effingham. Yeah. Yeah. So there's between his house and Effingham Junction, which is where the trains go, there's like a little uh, grassy area that's like this, like just a like a there's just large tracks of like grassy areas in in England that you just go walk about. Okay, just take a walk about. And the <laughs> at the end of this thing was a pond that was I don't know maybe like eight hundred square feet. And the pond had a tree. This is like idyllic, like postcard shit. Okay. One tree, giant, like an oak tree, okay. shaded over this large pond and a bench on the other side. And from this tree is a rope. And there's a a, a loop on the bottom of the of the rope. And there's a stick on, on the ground oh. that you would put through the, the rope. You put your feet over the stick. You hold the rope between your hands. And you can swing over the pond and back. Oh, that's cool. Okay. okay. I want to so do that. now that I'm less weight, I still have the 400 pound mentality of I'm going to break a chair. Yeah, I'm uh-huh. going to break a, you know, a stick. I'm going to break a rope. Yep. So I'm scared of all that. And then also, I don't know who's doing maintenance on <laughs> this tree, rope, stick. Yep. Situation. On. We're not sure. Anything, right? Yeah. So I'm so scared and I finally like gather up, muster the courage and I do one rock out and come back. And I was like, so stoked, go sit up my phone and put it on the bench. And I record myself and I had the time of my fucking life. I mean, I was swinging, I was giggling, I was laughing. And I was telling, I came back, I showed people, I was like, look at what I did today. What's this? Like we went to London, I think that day and like (laughs) saw this amazing shit, went to Trafalgar square, went to Piccadilly circus. And I was like, but I did this. I fucking swung on a rope. Fuck yeah, man. my cousins that live there, my cousin goes, that old rope is still there. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> he's like the old rope on the rickety tree. And I was like this rope. She's like, Oh yeah, man, I wouldn't trust that. And <laughs> oh, she was like a buck Oh five soaking wet. I was like, Oh fuck. <laughs> well, now we know yeah, it's not that rickety it. yeah. and it can fucking so, hold you. I mean, somebody's doing maintenance on it. Yeah. Like, damn it. Somebody out there is doing it because if it's still around and it, it, we want to say thank you to you. Yeah, if thank you're you taking to whoever care of it. is doing maintenance thank on that rope. Thank you to rope. whoever's fixing that And that's that a rope. great yeah. fucking NSV because, like, yeah. I know I have a feeling of like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to like sit here. Uh-huh. I might break this. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna like, get this to clip over mm-hmm. the top of me. Yeah. And you said you have a video of it. I do. Yeah. Okay, so we need that video when this okay, comes yeah, out because sure. that's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send oh it my to goodness. You. So, what's been your favorite part of being a bariatric patient? I think the the same way I feel about my wife is how I feel about the surgery is that I wish I would have done this sooner. Mm-hmm. And I they've done your wife I, sooner. Yeah. I mean, like literally do her yeah. or just <laughs> met her earlier. Yes. Both. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, the, same Z's, but I, yeah, yeah, so, no, I got you. I'm like, damn, I should have done him a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah. I would have known. <laughs> I would well, have had a better on idea of what's going on. It's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I would have met her sooner, and I, and I wish I would have married her sooner. But I, but I, I wish I would have done the surgery sooner because I suffered a lot needlessly, mm-hmm. thinking to myself that even though against all odds and every time that I have failed all the things, and I, and I say this too all the time: losing weight is easy. I've lost hundreds of pounds over the years. I've just mm-hmm. gained back all that weight plus extra right. whereas my grandfather likes to say plus the tax ah yes. yeah yeah there he is lost a tax. 100 pounds and then he gained 100 pounds plus the tax and i'm yeah. like ah, there it is yep so i so i really had i mean i forever have i had lymphedema and so my my shins the blood was pushed up against my skin okay and the iron that's in your blood which is the red part that you can see 
has stained the front of my shins. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Which is not that big of a deal on the regular. But yeah. if I ever go through a metal detector or one of those little scanny things, mm -hmm. they always capture that piece oh. on the on the leg and then go, we got to stop and check. And yeah. I'm like, I know, but it's it's, it's just iron. me. It's just me. It's not just I used to be fatter than I am now. <laughs> yeah. You're like, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for pointing me out. <laughs> but Thanks. it's fine. It's fine. Let's okay. just do it. So is that all gone now? Or like, how does that work? Like with most of the, uh, all the other things are gone. The only thing that's still kind of kicking about is the sleep apnea. And I think mm. if I get down to like 250, that, that should go away. And I'll, I'll probably do another test to kind of eliminate that altogether. Okay. And then, uh, but yeah, the, most of all the, 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 the diabetes is gone. The mm. cholesterol is gone. The blood pressure is gone. The, all, all the, all the things, all the numbers are normal. Perfect. It's amazing. Perfect. It's, uh, amazing. And for a long time, I wasn't doing any, uh, pills, no vitamins, no, none of that shit. Cause every time I test and everything was fine and my calcium, I wouldn't do my calcium. And then I talked to my nutritionist and she's the fucking best. She was like, listen, dude, like, you could do whatever you're going to do. Like you're an adult and I'm just going to fucking let you be one. <laughs> but here's the thing about calcium is that the calcium in your blood, if it's not enough, your blood will draw it out of your bones. Yep. That's so what the calcium it's doing. that you take, mm -hmm. yeah, which is your calcium that you're taking is to make sure your blood has enough so that it doesn't take it from your fucking bones. Yep. But you can go ahead and keep doing that and then keep running and then see what happens to you in 10 years. And I was yeah. like, no, 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 that's scary enough. I'm good. I'm like, very fear motivated. Okay, good yeah, to know. Ditto. Ditto. Yeah, ditto. Ditto, for sure. Very, very fear motivated. Mm -hmm. so. I am I'm definitely not. Yeah, that's why are I, you, I had the longer. Are you positively motivated? Like if someone's like, mm. if I will give you a question, this Kelly. prize if you get to that level. No, because it's not worth it. <laughs> So there's so there's a donkey that you hit with a stick and then he moves forward and there's a donkey that you put a carrot in front of him and he moves forward and you're telling me carrot or stick you're just like fuck you you're not doing I'm like I'm out <laughs> no normally it's me hitting Kelly for her to move yeah yeah like, have to, like, I have enough motivation for the both of us it right, really right. is as <laughs> if like somebody's mad at me that motivates me mm. if you're mad at if me if you make no if you make you angry that anger oh makes, that anger makes anger me, makes her yeah. motivated that's for sure if i'm angry yeah 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 so that's if someone, angry now I, I know that i get a lot my wife is like this too but uh if someone doubts me <sighs> if they're like you can't do a marathon that's you that's beyond you you can't you you can't run 26.2 miles and i'd be like When's the next marathon? I, go, I need to go. Challenge to accepted. Free. Yeah, yeah. Fuck mm -hmm. you. Watch what I can do. Is like that's gonna uh -huh. be on my on my gravestone. Yeah. Is <laughs> here lies Nima. Watch what I can do in quotes. <laughs> I love it. I love it because yeah, you want to fucking doubt me? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Pretty take much. you any fucking day. Yeah, and then I'm like, yeah, you're right. I. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I'm like, I'm gonna be over here. I'm gonna have a glass of wine. Watch you guys. Mm -hmm. Run yeah, your yeah. little show thing that you're doing, and <laughs> I'm good over here. I don't. Yeah, you're oh completely God. right. I don't. I cannot do that. I think. I think Kelly's more of a truth girl, and Mel, you're more of a dare girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll say whatever I need to say. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm pro i'm like i'm like i'm not gonna tell you shit dare me yeah yeah mm -mm. yeah you don't get to so know my like shit yeah just fucking do it yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'll show you with my work and the crazy shit that i'll get done yeah yeah yeah, yeah like if you make me angry i will do all of the things <laughs> true. so i just need so every morning when you come over i just need to like fire you up and then no <laughs> that's not good we've tried that <laughs> we've tried that it does not end just well cattle prod yeah, no, it doesn't. It does not motivate me at all. No, that's different. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I will. I love it. Oh, my God. So I wanted to say, so you told us about the chair and everything from college. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know that me and Kelly are going to share what our lowest lows were. Yes. Yeah, yeah. On your show. Yes. So people are going to, you guys going to need to listen to his show, which is my gastric sleeve podcast. Yes. That's right. That's yes. where we're going to do our Rolls crossover. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Doesn't it? It's smooth. Oh well, it's so, it's weird when you have your own because it's weird to say somebody else's podcast, but oh, yeah, we yeah. can say ours like nobody's business. Yeah. yeah so yeah. was that your lowest low? 
the chair in the college? No, you know what it was? Um, it's such a, ra- it's always the dumbest little thing. It's never like the, like I, I've always had a fear of breaking chairs. I used to have this in my standup. I, I, I always go like, I'm a big like sit down guy. So like, if you, if I walk into a room, there's a couch, I'm sitting. Mm-hmm. If there's a chair, I'm going to look to see like how it's situated and mm-hmm. set up. Yep. Like if it's like steel, there's like a wobbly leg. What I'll be careful. Plastic, right? But if it's like one of those, happening. those plastic beach chairs, yeah, like I'm just going to lean against the wall. Yeah. Yep. So I was at my uncle for lack of a better terms. So you know, like you have like family friends that have been mm-hmm. around your whole life. So you just call him uncle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've been at that uncle's house. We're hanging out. And I was probably 380, 390 at this point. Okay. And uh, they're all sitting outside and they have those beach chairs, those white fucking plastic <sighs> pray to God chairs. Death traps. And so <laughs> did you say death drops? <laughs> Trap. Death, death traps. 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 Oh, death traps. Yeah. yeah they're, death they're traps trap. also. Yeah. They're, yeah. Death trap. fucking trap. So I, I, I put one down and I sit in it, you know, when you're not sitting in it, like you're just like, you're like, like hovering butt cheek and most of it is like, like your and you're shaking from yeah, holding yeah. yourself up. <laughs> yes. I'm so comfortable. You're like, why am I doing a squat now? Sweat. I Pouring never, sweat. You're like, I, is everything okay? Is yeah, so it's great. fine. It's fine. I got this. I love this. Love and this for had, myself. I had just gone to Mexico and when I was in Mexico and they had those chairs in the sand, the guy with bigger people would put two chairs on top of each other to like reinforce it. Okay. And I was like, Oh, that makes more sense. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, so there was another chair. So I took the other chair, put it on top of the first chair. And then I sat in that and I was being, I was able to be a little bit less ginger and more Marianne or whatever the word is. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So I like sat in this chair and I was like, okay. And then later on, someone told me, you know, I saw you sitting in two chairs at so-and-so's house. And I said, yeah. And they were like, and I was worried about you. Mm. And I think in my whole life, but as a Middle Eastern person, as an Iranian person, I I won't speak for the whole Middle East, but I'll speak about my culture. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot of shit. (laughs) <laughs> and and we love to point out if someone's lost weight, you know, mm-hmm. we have all kinds of euphemisms for it. You look like the sun, there's water under your skin. Aww. You look like you're doing very well for yourself. Okay. Uh, did you get a promotion? Uh, that kind of shit. Okay. And uh, maybe it's time for a new shirt. And uh, so this person reached out to me and said that. And then like a week later, two of my best friends said to me, and almost, they had it. What like a, the, the smallest intervention you could have with somebody? Mm-hmm. They were like, "Hey, we're worried about you. We love you, and we're here for you in any capacity you need us to be. Mm-hmm. If you want us to hold you accountable, if you want us to check in with you, if you want us to shut the fuck up and leave you alone, however you want, whatever you want, mm-hmm. we will be there for you. But we're genuinely worried about your health and well being. I love and that. our kids." Are worried about it too. Wow. So those two things stuck with me. Then Dr. Gruen said the thing. And then mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let's have the surgery. After the surgery, much like after a breakup, mm-hmm. everybody came out of the woodwork and like, I'm so happy you did this. You mm. look so much better. I'm, I was so worried about you. Yeah. Uh. And there's lots of ways to approach somebody. And let me just tell you if you're not a fat person and you're listening to this podcast, I've been asked this question a lot. Are you comfortable with the way that you are? Are you comfortable with how fat you are? Do you wish you could lose weight? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I've heard those too. Interesting. I get defensive so quickly. This is mm-hmm. the this is the question to ask. In, in my opinion, this is the best question to ask. If you could snap your fingers and lose 10 pounds, how many times would you snap your fingers? Oh. That's it. If the answer is anything higher than zero, they're not happy with their weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And almost everybody you ask would be I like, say, no one's happy. Once, tw- yeah. <laughs> no one's fucking happy with their weight. Ever. No, nobody. No. There's so always you, something you change. Yep. You want to, yeah. You want to mm-hmm. be, maybe sometimes you want to be a little taller. You want to do this. You want to do that. Mm-hmm. But 10 pounds with a snap. Mm-hmm. Come on. So if that's the case, how many times do you snap? Like I'd snap like seven times. Oh, okay. So how can I help you with that? Because I'm a little worried about you and Mm -hmm. I want to support you and I love you and I care for you. 
I like that. But that's not a thing that people say. People mm. are people are like, what are you doing? They want to solve your problem mm. and they don't want to they don't want to be there for you emotionally. They just want to mm. give you a solution to your math problem and then fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. The answer is 17. Bye. And then you're like, 17, you what? Want, asshole? Yeah. What does that mean? What do I do with 17? <laughs> Do I do something 17 times? Like, what am I yeah, doing? Yeah. I'm so, I like that analogy, though, because that is an easier way to approach it, because I was trying to just approach it with one of my guy friends about, like, just getting the surgery. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, I talk to people all the time. So I'm just like, how would I even approach this with my dude friend that's 42? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm like. And finally, what it all what it took was literally me doing a live down here with uh, John J. Arps and mm -hmm. and they and the fact that he was just upstairs and he was like, hey, Mel, what 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 kind of live were you doing downstairs? And thank God I was talking to a man mm -hmm. that literally just told me he wished he did it sooner. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I asked him, why do you think men wait to wait longer than the normal that you guys wait yeah. way longer than women do. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he said it was he's all 100 percent my pride and 100 percent my ego. And so yeah. I told that to my buddy and you could see the wheels turning mm -hmm. because he wanted to be like, well, just give me a couple more years and see what I can do. Why? Yeah. Why? Why take extra time? That's Unless awesome. you are not mentally ready. Like yeah. if you still have a lot of work you have to do mentally. Yeah. I totally get behind waiting mm -hmm. because yeah. I think yeah. that mental part, it that mental puzzle trying to figure it out after it's yeah. a hard one. And but even that's a start though. Because that's them starting the journey of like getting their head together to do the surgery. Exactly. And that's a good way to start that whole like thing because for him, he still hasn't. No. And we'll see if he ever does. I love him to death. So I hope he does. Yeah. Um, but it's like, hey, man, like you guys, if the guys are listening, you're if, hopefully you didn't turn us off. Um, <laughs> if you know anybody that's struggling with their weight. Talk yeah. to them yeah. as your friend. Do the analogy yeah. about yeah. the snapping your fingers because yeah. that's a great way to like introduce it. Yeah. Because you're I, like, hey, man, you would do 10 like 10 uh, yeah, snaps, yeah. man. That's 100 pounds. <laughs> like, I'm kind of worried about you. Uh -huh. Like, that's a lot of weight. That's almost a person. So, yeah, yeah. I think talk about it. Uh, I think a lot of it, too, is like, I mean, very society centric. Oh, like, yeah. Society's just kind of accepted that dudes can be fat and it's fine. Yep. But women just shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one aspect of it. And I think another aspect of it is the medical aspect too, is like, I, I would imagine that some women just have this surgery to shut their doctors up, to be able to focus on the fucking problem that is in front of them. Yeah. yeah. Like I have all these issues and you just want to keep telling me to lose weight. All right, motherfucker, watch this. I'll lose a hundred pounds. Now I come back to you and I go, there's this problem. Now mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah. Now Same you're problem. Google it, right? Same mm -hmm. here. Can you fix me? <laughs> I know because like people that have PCOS, you know how long it is oh, for a woman to get diagnosed with PCOS. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Yeah. And it's like, my goodness, if we could actually focus on the symptoms and stuff like that yeah. and not just like 20 pounds. Yes. Does mm -hmm. losing weight help PCOS? Absolutely. But that's not a cure. No, none of so. it's a cure. It's just, no. I mean, I went through the same exact thing. Like if, if it wasn't, so it's really hard to diagnose autoimmune diseases you have to do a certain test and if you're not in a flare it doesn't always pick it up yep. oh. so there i was lucky that the first test i took was very plainly seen on the test like i had these two autoimmune but then it's like all these other things happen and they're like, oh, it's just your autoimmune. Oh, it's just your autoimmune. Instead of like looking into it being like, oh, no, this is like an actual problem I'm having. Oh, they're just, so now for you, they're just chucking it up to the autoimmune instead exactly. of just your weight. Yeah. It's like they always find something just to chuck it up. to. Yeah, yeah they're just like, eh, it's just your RA. It's just your lupus. Like, And it gives the doctors that actually want to do a thorough examination a bad name because yeah. mm -hmm. that reminds me why like my family the the dudes in the family never wanted to see any doctors because mm -hmm. they're just like who's gonna throw pills at me and it's like what well, we actually don't know unless you but go also you can advocate for yourself yeah like, mm -hmm. uh, you could just go there and go hey man i don't want let me tell you something I, again my wife <laughs> uh she's amazing and been through so much and she goes to the doctor and they're like you have pain she goes yeah i have pain they go great we'll give you these pain pills she was like i don't want pain pills mm -hmm. i don't want you to do that i want you to fix the fucking problem yeah mm -hmm. don't lower the volume of the problem 
fix it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fix this fucking issue. Find out what the problem is and fix that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to sit here and just take pill after pill yep. because I'm just going to get numb. I'm not going to think my pain tolerance is going to go down like all this other shit. And I don't know what this pill is going to do to my fucking liver, my kidneys, yeah. my, my intestines, my, all my shit. Like it's fucking nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's their number one answer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Always, always. Well, it looks like we are, Coming up on time. Yes. Is okay. there any tips or tricks that you would like to tell our audience before we go? I think the thing that helped me the most and the thing that I need to get back to is tracking and being just, you don't have to share it with anybody. Mm-hmm. You could even, this was a, a Weight Watchers trick I, I learned early on. Just snap a photo of everything that you eat in the day. Mm-hmm. Mm. You don't have to necessarily go on the app and and do it all, mm-hmm. but just everything that you eat, just take a photo of it, then eat it. If mm-hmm. anything, it'll at least pause a little bit mm-hmm. before. And my grandfather has a great rule that if you're in the middle of eating or anything and someone calls you on the phone or they knock on your door, you stop, put the fork down, go answer, talk to them, go put the food away. And then when they leave, go see if you're hungry and then go back and eat. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. And I'm like, I love that because mm-hmm, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a don't ever put your sandwich down guy. Yeah. Right? It's always in my hand mm-hmm. and I'm just maneuvering it mm-hmm. so I can eat the whole thing without ever having to put it down. So you yeah, take a bite, put it down, do all this stuff. You know what helps with that? What? Is if you don't like your neighbors and so you don't answer the door. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I felt it. And if you're like Melanie and you just don't want people to call you because it's raping your phone, like it is. I mean, that allowed. solves both those problems. That solves both those problems. Between oh my me God. and Mel, we just solved your problem. You are yeah, welcome. Yeah. That's you awesome. Are, no, I, I don't think we actually solved this problem. Yeah, I think that we made it worse. It, it, no, solves, no, I got it you. solves it for me. Yeah, it solves it for you. Yeah, because yeah, I, mean, I don't answer the door. You're ridiculous. Like, I hide. Like, I do get nervous so answering the door. when people come and knock on your door, Kelly, you're just like, you nope. don't answer. Fuck you. If I don't know TV's you're coming. on, no. you're on the phone with someone, <laughs> yeah. and then they're like, hello? No. Yeah, and I'm like, nope, not answering that. I think there's a fire in the building. <laughs> you're like, oh, I guess I'm going to burn then, huh? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I'm like, cool, you stay out there. I'll look for the firemen you up here. You know when she'll check for the fire when I FaceTime her? <laughs> She'll yeah. be like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, She's if you're FaceTiming. Dude, you're on the news. You're not getting out of your house. <laughs> that's the that's the funny thing is like you, you're like you do her like Chippendale. Like you're like <laughs> like what like maybe if, we should if, be that for Halloween this year. Oh, we can be Chippendale. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be fun. great. Yeah. One will yeah. be what? One of you would be uh, like if like if Mel ever FaceTimes you, you know, it's serious. Oh, yeah. and if Kelly ever knocks on your door, you know, that's serious. Yeah, because I don't knock. I just walk in. That's true. She does it every morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm always like, Kelly's here. Yep. <laughs> Good morning. No, I, like I don't. That. I don't. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yes, coming thank on. You. Thank you. Don't... I can't wait to to have you on my show. That's and, right. Uh, that's going to be great. My gastric sleeve podcast. Yes. Check that out. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, there's my gastric sleeve podcast uh, on Instagram. And I am at Nima Speaks. Nima Speaks. N I M A Speaks. And we will so have that's that all all across below. That's yeah, that's all uh, across all platforms. Oh, Perfect. I love it. Thank you so much all for right. coming on. Thank you so much. Guys, if you guys want to hear what our freaking low lows are, you're yes. going to yeah. have to go over to his podcast yes. and listen. And it is uh, out now. So go listen. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Go check that out. All right. All right. We love you guys. And we will see you next time.